So I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour of my, um, my studio. It's on the third floor of our house in the attic. Um, you'll see two prints there of previous neighborhood and the one I live in now. This is my desk setup for doing scanning and photography editing. Um, that sideboard has more equipment in it and also displaying some of my camera collection, vintage camera collection, my easels tucked in there. Um, here's some of the um, camera bodies and lenses that I have and some jewelry stands because I used to do a lot more jewelry photography. I don't right now. And there's some of my collection and some plants trying to live, although I'm very cruel to them. And that's the view from the front of the house. So this is in Hamilton, Ontario, and we're right at the corner house. So there's my futon for relaxing and playing around on laptop when I can't stand being by the desk. Um, there's always a London fog nearby. Uh, that's a print I made quite a long time ago and some information about shows I've had. And it's so neat and clean in this video. Um, there's my large scale printer, which I have to fix and my, one of my strobe lights and then more of my cameras and sketchbooks and art books and even a um, eight millimeter a film camera and a Polaroid LAN and then some books I got not too long ago about artist spaces because I was working on um, a series of creative women in Hamilton and their spaces. So moving along, there is where we used to live. We used to live in the upper beaches in Toronto. Well, that's what real estate agents call it. Now we're in Stipley. There's a little oil painting that I did of one of my favorite cameras from my collection. And there's another. And there's my defibrillator that used to be in my chest. Um, it saved my life, that one, I think in 2013. I can't remember now. Anyways, I had it taken out in 2017 for a new battery. So that's black and white. Um, these are the Scatus or Scatus uh, pegboards from Ikea and they house watercolor markers and other markers. Um, those are charts for different watercolors and things that I have and more markers, stabilo markers that I really love. And then list of polychromos pencils that I have. That's a painting box that also acts as the, um, an easel, a desk easel. So this is one of the Ikea Alex cabinets. I love, love, love them. Um, bought those last summer and they house all the papers that I use. So a lot in there. And then um, these palettes I had made by an artist in Hamilton. Uh, she usually does wood turning, but she's also turned, no pun intended, to ceramics as well. And in this one, I have mostly watercolor things, um, inks, like Ecoline inks. Um, so the ones to the Dalarani and these ones, the Marabou aqua inks. Some of them are acrylic and some of them are actual inks. That one I got, I think, in a subscription box. So it's a bit of a mishmash. Yep, that one came from a subscription box too. So that's the speedball one. And that was a Daniel Smith palette that I don't use because they're terrible. And these are just 
some of the best watercolor pencils you can buy. The Karen Dush Museum Aquarelle. The Inktense ones are fabulous too. Um, and so are the Koinor. Um, I don't tend to use the Koinor too much. I bought those in Berlin years and years ago. Uh, the German Inktense are great. They're really, um, really impactful. Uh, there's some Stadler ones and then a uh, subscription box one. And for some reason, a little portable speaker in there. And I got a Kaweco um, fountain pen. That's the backup inks. And then these Faber Castle gelatos, which are really hard to find. I've only been able to get them down in the States or by Amazon, which I think they still ship in the States. There's more Stateler that I bought. Oh, I can't even remember how many years ago I bought those. And I should really just give them away. And there's my original travel palette, Cotman. Um, that's what I brought around with me in Europe many, many years ago. And it's kind of well used. Came with a little brush, a little travel brush. And yeah, these are terrible palettes, so I don't use them. And my Dan Smith collection has grown, so they wouldn't have fit in there anyways. And it all goes back in somehow. And this drawer is more um, pastels and other things, gouache, um, Posca pens. Um, these came in a subscription box. I'm getting used to using more of those. Love this color. And then the Holbein acrylic gouache. Is that a yeah, that's acrylic gouache one. Love that color too. I just bought like colors that appeal to me. Um, the Lucas white gouache is really good. And Oh, this color is really nice. That was a regular designer gouache. And there's some sponges. Oh, Nitrum liquid charcoal is amazing. It's made in Canada. Um, got some Unison pastels. They're really expensive, so I only have two of them, I believe. I bought those for life drawing classes that I didn't go back to. And these are the um, Derwent XL Graphite Chalks, again, really great for doing large scale, um, especially, there's the other one, especially um, life drawing, I really like it from, for, and this another subscription box, um, acrylic, just regular old acrylic in the primaries. I haven't really used them as you can see. And I got a pan pastel too, a long time ago, again for life drawing. Um, but thanks to COVID, I haven't been able to do that. I have done some online. There's some free or um, cheaper online life drawing classes. And these are um, Conte and Mangyo hard pastels. And it's a little, that box I got, I'm not sure, somewhere in Europe a long time ago, and it's really cute. It has three little drawers of nice colors. And there's more markers, markers I just got. I'm just kind of getting into them. Um, there's one of the first gouache sets I got was one of these Heaney ones. They go by other names, but they're all the jelly pot ones and they, they really dry up, but you can use them. It does seal well, but obviously not that well. And then Rembrandt, um, pastels I've got used to too. Oh, and there's some pens from 
uh, pen case I used to use a lot. So these are, I got these, one of those in um, a workshop. And so that led to me exploring their soft pastels a little bit more. And I got this set that I'm having a hard time opening with just one hand of their darks because I, I use a lot of those in my um, watercolor just to add some texture and really really beautiful colors they're a little bit harder than some of the soft pastels and then Derwent's Graphitin I really love this little travel palette I love water soluble graphite it just has such a different quality to it and some really nice muted colors if you're into that and then I got these um ohu um water soluble pens they're um double tip pens brush pens and this is where I just keep the empty um, original cases for my color pencils. And here's more graphitint and these are beautiful and they work really nicely with that graphitint um, palette. And I have more in here. Again, very difficult to do with one hand. And there's tinted charcoals as well by Derwent in here. And it's a two-story um, pencil case. Really nice little tin from Derwent as well. And they're just, I haven't used them enough. Um, I'm hoping that will change soon go out exploring more and bring them those with me. Then I have the um, Stabilo pencil, um, pastel pencils, and a couple of the fabric pastel ones. Again, another tin, empty tin. More sort of cheapy, soft pastels. I think I got it Blix. And that was a while ago. I haven't been able to travel like so many of us. And again, all crams back in. Somehow. And then this bottom drawer is um, the Ecoline. You saw the inks up there, bottle inks. Um, that's a sample from Liquitex. There's some more photography paper in there. This one, the gecko ones from um, Japan are amazing. Speaking of Japan, these are Japanese watercolors I got from Choosing Keeping thanks to my very generous cousin in London. Um, these are the 60s, 70s, and 80s palettes. You'll see my finger there. I still have a problem with my finger and I don't know what it is. Uh, it might be a torn ligament. So, and those are the gray set um, of the Ecoline brush pens. Again, I use a lot of those colors in my artwork. They're not light fast, so I, I kind of don't use them as much in commission work. And there's the green set. And there's more um, just loose ones that I've got. I bought, that was the first one I bought was black. It's really, really intense black. These are more Japanese um, watercolors. Again, in the muted tones. Kind of not too different from the graphitin, but also like you don't get that sheen, the graphite sheen. And there's... Um, more Ganzai um, Japanese watercolors. Got that off of Amazon, I think. 
And here's Derwent's um, Inktense palette, which probably should be up above with the pencils. Uh, palette number one, really nice colors. And you can buy the palette with all the colors, but I bought these before they did that. So that's a number two palette, which is fine. They easily pack into a bag. And all going back. It's a case of kind of Jenga with trying to make everything fit. And these are my new um, Neo Color 1s. I have Neo Color 2s, but I wanted something that was um, that you could use as a resist. So I got this set of Neo Colors. They look very like the Neo Color 2s, so you have to look before you use them. And more shots of the whole thing, studio. And there's my bulletin board I made, my oil palette, oil brushes and um, bulldog clips. This is where I keep um, spare tubes of watercolor. Um, some of the pigments I use for making my own watercolor in here and more. These are the Cornelison ones that I bought last summer. And they're beautiful pigments. More of my book collection and cameras. My MacGyvered paper towel roll there. Uh, all my brushes are in this Ikea cart. I really love these Faber-Castell Echo pigment pens. I need to get some more because I've worn down the nibs. Lots of things that I need at hand and also these little sample um, papers that you can get through Jackson's. Gorilla Glue, always handy. Frisket. This is a really old bottle of Frisket. Smells a lot. And there's a pen I haven't even opened. It's a Frisket pen. But I have um, one of that bottle that has a really, really small tip, and I prefer to use that instead for doing detail. You can see it's really small, and then the top has a um, sharp point on it to keep it from sticking or clogging up. A whole bunch of erasers and um, kneadable erasers and a variety of sharpeners. This is my favorite, though. I think it's a coon. No, m and R. Yep. You can do different points on that one. More erasers. I've got that sharpener from Derwent's, but I don't like how it claws at the pencils. Uh, so there's my color pencil display. They're all done to yellows, reds, blues, greens. Here's some light fast. I have light fast, um, a whole variety of luminance. The Derwent drawing ones are beautiful, very muted, um, natural colors. And I have, there's the polychromos. There's my Kaveco pen just sitting there. And those luminates. And the studio ones are really good for detail. Uh, the Derwent studio ones. 
what else? I do have a couple of the Christmas colors, but not too many. It's mostly I'm obsessed with grays and greens, so. And there's some blenders up here, an eraser pencil from Faber Castell. That's Burnisher. They're really good, the Dermot Brown ones. And there's another, the Blender. My Snake Plant. Oh, and these are the Caran d'Ache Blenders. They're really good too, but they're just, I don't know, there's something about them that's a little bit weird. And there's, those are pencil extenders for when these get down to nubs. And an electrical eraser because why not? Especially when you're doing like little detail erasing. And there's the pen, really nice fountain pen from Kaveco. And this little tin has my museum aquarelles in there and some other watercolor brands, but mostly museum aquarelles. Super Straff is the cheaper Caran d'Ache brand. And there's the Faber Castell Albrecht Dürer, which I have on order now for Fuller Set. And I'm not as keen on the Derwent watercolor pencils. And there's a little um, palette or brush rest that I made. And there's the, the thing that tries to murder my, my pencils. Da Vinci paints, watercolor paints I love. I gave a free bag. Here's my mess, but it's, it's organized chaos. I have my label maker, um, blenders, palette knives, a uh, thing for making circles and lines, perspective tools, all my black or yeah, I guess black fine liners are on this cart. I love making labels. There's more equipment down here, solvents, um, sprays, mediums, gesso, all that sort of stuff on that cart. More plants that I'm trying to kill. And under the eaves, Great. I have a lot of storage there and just odds and ends in here, tapes and papers, uh, empty boxes of things. And then some boards and tearaway pallets by Royal Talons just getting into oil painting, so I'm exploring different ways. I prefer the plexi that I have. It can be scraped off, too. So under the eaves, I can store um, canvas boards and wooden panels. I have more books. That's my little window seat there. There's Muller for mulling paints my Zoe that I made and this is more stuff for cutting and packaging up um, commissions there's my paint making box everything hanging so that it's nice and close and not taking up space on the table I absolutely love having a cutting table and there's more paper and another Alex those are finished works um, this is where I keep all my oil paints and oil pastels. So I started using Cobra, um, I guess early winter. And then I've started using Artisan, uh, Windsor Newton brand too. That's the student Cobra. And this is the, um, professional artist grade Cobra tubes. 
and I got um, Karen Dosh's oil pastels are a little, little bit harder than the Sennelier ones so it's kind of nice to have that that option and here are the Sennelier 72 sets and it's just beautiful there's so such such beautiful oil pastels are so creamy colors are so vibrant I am just love them and I can't wait to use them more and more and I did get some um, open stock you can buy them open stock you can also buy Sennelli um, large um, oil pastels and it's some um, canvas paper experiment with uh, Royal Talons big tube of white because you can't have enough and glazing medium and here's the the open stock that I have there's some May Marie those two green ones are not as good they're they're very very hard and it's hard to get them going but they're a lot cheaper so and moving on here's all the packing stuff I use my labels um, polyethylene bags business cards and then I didn't have room so I had to stuff the Mangio oil pastels in there as well these are a whole lot cheaper and they're pretty good they're pretty soft um, it's another box of 72 colors and when you're doing um, larger backgrounds you know you might as well use the cheaper cheaper oil pastels it's a nice little box I may get one of those um, boxes with the drawers to store all the pastels and here's my drawer of pigments for making my own watercolor more cameras anything that's narrow sits in there here's some acrylic and my light extension cord Zoe on my old chair I don't know about you but I, I love that um, footrest it really helps my back so this little Ikea drawer is where I put um, all of my watercolor palettes and odds and ends. And here I have um, gel pens, as you see, and Posca pens. And here are the Neo Color 2s. I've just been, I had a little set of them and I've just been adding to them with open stock when I can find them. My cute little container from Japantown, San Francisco. This is my um, travel kit from Jackson's. It has some things I've taken out because I've been using them. Um, I'll do another video about what I take for travel. And these, um, the Sibilo black aquarelle pencils are also amazing. Very, very intense black. And then here's some more business cards for uh, paint making, little tubes to store the paint, stuff like that.
stuff's right in there. Um, those are little tins. And there's the um, color swatches for the paints that I make. That's the chromium oxide color. And there's the little boxes that they fit into. And in the bottom are just um, my battery chargers, some labels for the watercolors, and some thank you cards for clients. And then more stuff stuff under there, more cutting mats, because you can't have enough. And there's um, where I store all, not that one, all my acrylic paints are in there. A lot of them are from an old friend who was moving. Um, my apron, my travel bags, camera bags, a tripod, two tripods all in this little sort of cubby. This is what I use for filming regularly. Although I've recently just broken it. There's an umbrella for shooting. Um, a carry tube for when I get things printed. And back to my desk. And I really love this Canon scanner. It's so much better. The printer underneath has a scanner, but it's rubbish. Um, my iMac. Um, I do not use this enough. Wacom tablet. And there's my favorite alarm clock. The bird, when the alarm goes off, the bird's eyes light up red and it's really frightening. Especially when you didn't know that I did that. And there it is. There's my studio. There's the backyard that I get to look upon. And our gazebo. And the garden that we, we did from scratch. And... That's it. Now a bit of an update. Um, since it's filming that, we bought another place. So this is the state of my studio right now. It is pretty horrible um, coming up to it every day and seeing this this mess but once I get settled at the end of June beginning of July it will feel a lot better I'm going to a much much smaller space but you know I'm also moving back to Toronto and I'll be downtown Toronto so I'll have you know, I'll be near the lake and lots of things to do and see, lots of places to go and sketch. So I think it'll be a really good move. So I will update when I get there and get all settled. Um, a lot of this has to cram into a really tiny space. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'll figure it out. Some things are coming, some things are not. And this is where I'm kind of shoved into right now. Got a new chair, it's adjustable. Um, cat's still sleeping in my old chair. But yeah, I'm kind of excited about this new move and basically starting over again, but kind of not too, because I used to live in Toronto. So will be familiar. And that is that for my Hamilton studio.